Today, let's talk about the potential energy. The potential energy, the meaning potential suggests possibility or capacity for action. The potential energy is actually a stored form of energy. To have the potential energy, you must do some work that can be against the gravitational force or against the electrostatic force or against the any other force. So the work done against the force is only stored in the form of potential energy. Potential energy can be defined as the energy gained by any object by virtue of its position or state or configuration. The potential energy can be categorized into three. One, gravitational potential energy. Two, the spring potential energy. And three, the chemical potential energy. For gravitational potential energy, you can give the example of water fall, which is coming down from a very height to the ground. So when the water is at this particular position, then it is having potential energy. Now here in the case of spring potential energy, if you compress the spring or if you stretch the spring, then potential energy will be stored because to compress or to stretch, you have to do some work. Similarly, by virtue of the configuration, this chemical potential energy is caused. In this video, let us concentrate only on gravitational potential energy and in the videos to come, we will concentrate about the spring potential energy. Now, to derive the expression for gravitational potential energy, let's take an object of mass m and it is raised to a height by applying the force against the gravity to a height h. Now here, what force is required to raise the object? To lift the object, the weight of the object itself is sufficient. If the uh, mass of the object is m and acceleration due to gravity is small g, then mg is the force required to raise the object. Now to calculate the work done, you have to multiply the force times displacement. So here the force is weight of the body itself. The displacement which it is raised is h. Therefore, mg must be multiplied by h. So here force times displacement in place of force, we have to replace mg and then it should be multiplied by h. So here this mgh will give us the work done. This work done is stored in the form of potential energy. As we discussed already, potential energy is the stored energy. Now this potential energy is a function of height. If you see this equation, potential energy is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times the height. If you increase the height, then potential energy is increased. Let's take the equation Vh is equal to mgh and then let us take the differentiation of this equation with respect to h. So then what happens dv by dh is equal to mg dh by dh. So where the differentiation of h with respect to h itself is 1. So that's why here mg into 1 that is nothing but mg. We can say that the derivative of potential energy is equal to the force. In the case of gravitational potential energy, we have to make use of a negative sign because the gravitational force is always acting towards the earth. And if you want to raise the object, you have to apply the force against the gravity, therefore minus mg. So you can say that force is equal to negative derivative of the potential energy. Now let us define the potential energy mathematically. So force is a function of x here. fx is equal to minus dv by dx. So now let us integrate this equation for getting the work done. The integral over fx dx which is operated from x initial to x final is equal to minus times of integral over dv where v is to be integrated from v initial to v final. 
So V initial is the potential energy corresponding to X initial and V final is the potential energy corresponding to X final. Now if you look at the left hand side expression it is nothing but the work done. So we can write the work done is equal to V initial minus V final. So here we can say that the work done is independent of the path. It is depending only the potential energy of initial position and the potential energy of the final position. So we can write V initial minus V final or V final minus V initial if you write then a negative sign will come here. So for any conservative force we can say that delta V is equal to minus fx delta x. Remember this equation we are going to use while proving the law of conservation of energy. So this equation is very important. So delta V is equal to the change in potential energy is equal to minus work done. So here this V final minus V initial if you take then it becomes minus work done. So this is applicable for all conservative forces. Now let's talk about what are conservative forces. Let's quote some examples for conservative forces. First let's define what is conservative force if the work done is not depending on the path. If it depends only on the initial position and final position then we call that force as the conservative force. But in some cases of some forces it is depending on the path. For example, if you take viscous forces or frictional forces, then it depends on the path. So that means if the floor is very rough, then more work is required. If the floor is uh, a bit smoother, then less work is required. So there are some forces in which the work done is independent of path. Those are called conservative forces. And if the work done is path dependent, then we call it as non-conservative forces. Now let's quote some examples. Gravitational forces, then spring forces, electrostatic forces. So these are all some of the conservative forces where non-conservative forces, the most popular uh, force is frictional force and then viscous force and some other forces. So with the help of this knowledge, we are going to prove the law of conservation of energy, potential energy plus kinetic energy in the case of conservative forces is always constant. In the next video, let's prove the law of conservation of energy, the statement of conservation of energy and we will also take some cases in which we will prove that the mechanical energy at any particular position is always same. That's all in this video. Thank you for watching.